We're back for episode two of the Members Cast. And I have the winner of the 2024 40-day challenge. And I sent 10 racks to his bank account. Danny, and you have to pronounce your last name. Sesternino. Everyone, Sesternino. That, everyone calls me Sess. Yeah, yeah. That, I was, I was going to attempt it. And then I was like, I need to hear it right first. So, anyway, I'm glad to have you, Danny. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Oh, of course, Jay. I was looking forward to this. Yeah, so give me a little bit of background, right? Obviously, we're going to talk about you lost 17 pounds, you won the contest, but like, how did you find out about Max Effort or myself? Like, give me kind of a little bit of background on you coming into working with the brand and getting these type of results and the app and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, sure. When I was in college, I, I was trying to get more into weightlifting. I ended up getting my MBA and I didn't have a lot of my college friends around, so I started lifting. But that really led me to Googling a lot of different things, trying to learn how to lift and things. But gee, one of the first articles I ever saw you was on bodybuilding.com. And it was something like the skinny on fat loading. Um, and it was all about oh, how you, yeah. really, you really fat loaded, like, and you're eating just like handfuls of cashews all day long. And, and this was like the first time I really saw you and uh, really sparked my interest. So I always kind of followed you around. Um, but I never really subscribed to Corey G until last year in January when I felt like I had tried a bunch of different things before different diets and different, uh, I never really had a workout plan, workout program. Um, so my buddy, Dan White, shout out, he, he used to follow you and he signed up with your app before. So he, he was definitely a, a big driver for me. So I signed up and I did the, the, I want abs contest last year. Um, and didn't even come in the top 100. So that definitely burned a nice fire in me for this year. off a little bit. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Like the MJ used to say, now it's personal. I love it. So talk to me about, that's interesting because for me, right, I always think there's a lot of people that were like yourself, Danny, that kind of paid attention to what I had going on, right? Or maybe were inspired by it or were paying, like they would catch some things here and there. But then what I'm trying to do a better job of, which is another reason why I'm doing these type of interviews too, is like, how do I get that person? Because I believe if you come into the fold and you try, I can make a difference. Obviously, you've seen that when you committed fully, right? So it's like, what made you then say, now I'm going to really try to fucking do what this dude's talking about or see what it's about. So I'm trying to figure out that's probably my biggest, you know, kind of thing where I'm trying to really get enough content out there to say like, there's all these people that have said, I'm going to try what G's crazy ass is saying. And I got these results and it's not one person. It's a gang of people. So what was that difference for you? And then maybe what would be your, I guess, thing that you would say to people that are what I call on the fence essentially. Yeah, it's a good question. I don't know. When I first saw your, the, the fat loading, I was thinking, oh, this is crazy. So I never really bought into that because for me, I always had stro struggles losing weight. And at that point, though, we saw how shredded you were. Um, so it's just so memorable for me that I, re I do recall that. I just, I was kind of in more of this like scientific, I need this many calories. I mean, this many uh, macronutrients. Um, and, you know, your program doesn't go that way. And honestly, that's like uh, such a big relief for me because I used to weigh every single thing. And um, I feel so free at this point when I used to be so like, I have too much, one ounce extra, or I have, you know, a little bit too much of this. Um, so I, I don't know. I think me failing in other diet programs and things like that made me think, oh, let me go and try G's. Okay. Well, you know what? I think that that exact thing that you explained about weighing the food and all that is how I felt as a professional at it. Right. So keep in mind, this was my thought process. If I'm feeling this way and this is my job. How can I expect people that it's not their job to actually do this? And on the flip side, it can borderline give you a fucking eating disorder, I think, because you're not, you know what I mean? And so it's like, I, I really made this like push for a lifestyle to say, how can I get these guidelines where people can then start to understand their own body in the process and then really start to police these things with a little bit more freedom and build this machine up. And so sometimes that's hard to kind of get across, but it's like, um, I'm glad you said that because that is like one of the things that I felt. And I just knew that how are other people that don't do this every day, like they're, that they love it. Like I love it. And, and I didn't even want to do it that way. So I know there is something to be said for being that 
kind of in the lines, but I would say most people aren't going to operate that way. Yeah. And, and your emails where you hit home on forget the Tupperwares, intermittent fasting is really the way to go. Um, you know, two big meals. I'm always hungry. So eating two big meals has really kept me full. I don't think about food all the time. Um, while I used to be just like your email says, staring at the clock and waiting for the next time to eat or a handful of something here, it sucked. And I would work in the city, so I'd be carrying around all these Tupperwares everywhere on the trains or then trying to eat on the train. It stunk. Yeah, so really the lifestyle spoke a lot to you. Like, why don't Big I time. give this a try? Yeah. Good. Talk to me about your workout situation. Do you work out at your house, at a gym? Like kind of what's, uh, how, how, how did you do that throughout the contest and just in this process in general? Yeah, so I work out at a gym. Um, just before I even get into that, when I used to work out on my own, I used to write down a couple of things or think, oh, maybe it's, I should do some chest stuff today. So once I finally joined on with G and doing the um, golden era swall stuff, that was a big game changer for me. And I used to start on like level two of, of golden era swall. So when the merger all happened and stuff, it was like right in time for I want abs. Um, so obviously I jumped on, um, but I walk, it's about a little less than half a mile to my gym. So waking up at, you know, quarter to four in the morning, walking over to the gym, um, you know, doing my GPP right into my workouts, you know, I'm there for like almost two hours between the GPP, the abs, the lunges. It's, it's a, a, a bear, but it's so uh, fulfilling every single day. Well, I appreciate you saying that. And that, you know, that being said, that's another reason why I created the pump thirties because a guy that does work in the city that might not have that amount of time could still do 30 minute pumps, do conditioning and still get a better result than him just writing a couple chest exercises down. Right. So it's like, now I feel like we're having an offering where, you could use that as a strategy if for some reason you get tied up, right? Or you can commit to these things and I think they can play off of each other. And I'm really trying to meet our customers kind of where they are in their life. And I think like you're obviously the winner on the extreme side, but letting people know like it doesn't have to start that way. There can be steps to it, right? Or you can get your ass kicked year one and be like, oh, year two, I'm going to be at the gym this amount of time to get those results. So I think that's good. I think the lifestyle thing, I think that you obviously have bought into the whole crazy, which is why you feel the way you feel. Oh, I love it. So I love that. Talk to me about your favorite two like max effort products. What are the two favorite okay. whether it's yeah. shoes, flavors or whatnot? Yeah, pre-workout is by, by far my favorite you know, I need that in the morning and, and, uh, um, and definitely the aminos that, that was, those are my staples every day. Um, helps me get to the gym, get through everything. Um, I, I have been now on the creatine just, uh, after the I want abs and, um, definitely feeling I, I, I need a little extra, something like that. Oh yeah. Well, and I think really when I created the amino recovery, it was really based around the, the fasting protocol. And I think, especially for somebody that trains in the morning, then you do feel recovered better because you are getting the building blocks of recovery, like along that process. Cause then people are always saying, I'm going to lose, I'm going to get so small. I'm not going to feel very good. Uh, I hear like every million, I'm like, has anyone seen the guys I train with? Do we look any less jacked? Right. Like, come on. Right. And same with any of the guys in the office that have followed this, like, um, but I understand those are all to your point. You were, this is what is really interesting. You were on the science kick, right? And whenever you read about the fat loading process, I was working with Dr. Eric Serrano starting to understand all these things between calorie surpluses and just like insulin manipulation. And we had done that as like a test run to see if we could get like a drug like effect from a, a you know a drug free athlete with that amount of like calories in a day with that high of fat and and that's really what it felt like but it is because I was at the optimal point waiting for something like that where instead of a carb load I went to a fat load of calories and it was like really a crazy so it's funny that you locked onto that which is probably one of the more extreme articles I've ever written in my life because <laughs> I had literally two dozen eggs and cheese, two canisters of cashews, two different meals of steak. And it was well over 10,000 calories, I think for the day. Um, but woke up the next day, two pounds lighter and looked like I was on steroids basically. <laughs> and so it was like, that's funny that now we've evolved all the way down, Danny, to you're at the point where you're in the more general way that you're operating in a lifestyle, but you were comfortable with it and it's worked. So maybe how can people evolve from, they really think it's 
this way, but it really can be more freeing and be this way. You know what I mean? But how do we get people uh, to bridge that? Yeah, it, it's a great question. I am always eating my sweet potato at nighttime and it's my mom says they're, you know, the size of a football and I'm the biggest sweet potato I can find. But and people constantly will ask, oh, you think this is healthy? Well, you're eating a pizza, you know, this is crazy. So so I love the fact that it's sure. it's nutritious food. It's quality food. Um, honestly, the variety isn't that much, but I'm hungry and, and I always feel like it tastes really good. So I think anybody that's willing to give it a try and give it a, a couple of weeks will uh, 100% feel better and, and see some differences. You know, um, I've studied a lot of the Blue Zone stuff, Danny. And what's interesting is, and I've seen with my own body as I've gotten older, um, how it's changed in a way like where I felt like I've been able to kind of fight off the aging to some degree, right? And every culture, bro, that I've studied eats tubulars, meaning sweet potatoes of some sort. And they eat, you know, they don't eat meat as much probably as we do, but on the busy diet, it's only once a day, not twice a day, right? So that kind of limited a little bit yeah. and it's a little bit more of a plant protein because a lot of people are using plant protein for their first meal. And so the other thing is the fats with uh, avocados or nuts. And um, the only thing that we don't do on a regular basis is have any type of beans. And that's one of the things that I'm going to start to test that that's the one thing that keeps showing up in all those cultures that live to like a hundred years old mm -hmm. is they walk everywhere. And then most of them, they live on a hill. So they're doing obviously some type of GPP every day, farming or walking or whatever. And then on top of that, they eat very similar to how we're eating uh, very, very close. And so yeah. there's these things kind of happen on accident, but the reality is they're lined up even more than I realized, which is why people are feeling low inflammation. They're keeping their body fat the way they are. And they, they have this type of energy, um, when they don't think they will. And back to another thing that I learned when I, I interviewed Gary player, shout out Gary player. He's a boss, right? The, the golfer. And I interviewed him twice. And the first thing he said to me when I asked him about his diet was people don't need as much food as they think they do. And I just thought that was an interesting statement from a guy that's been, you know, won the Masters however many times, still golfing, you know, in his 80s and has had an unbelievably competitive, healthy life. And he just said that the, the fasting and eating the quality food and that, you know, it's just people, I think, get, got to get out of their own head and just give their bodies actually what they need and listen to it. So anyway, there's just, I think that, a lot of the yeah. things uh, that you've touched on are things that are hot buttons for a lot of people. So I appreciate that because I think, and I know there's a lot of members that could watch something like this and go, man, I do really need to go all in. And you wrote that in your thing. I read that you went all in. So what, what was that shift where you're just like, well, I didn't like not making the top 100. So fuck it. I'm just going to listen all the way. Is that really what happened? Yeah, no, I, I think, I think I was expecting it to be more magic. Just do AF and, and you'll get shredded. So I was telling my wife last year, oh, you get to eat ice cream on the weekends and things like that. And I remember one of the first or second times I was spiking, I had this giant bowl of ice cream. And she's like, is that healthy? I'm like, this is the program. But so this year, I definitely had a little more strategic. And, and you know, you've posted a bunch of times, you'll have like your five bananas or something like that. And, and that was more how I spiked uh, during the contest. And I really f I fell in love with the busy diet during the contest, because I have two little boys at home, we do a nap time during lunch, it was almost uh, it was very tough to cook, eat, wash the dishes, watch them put them down for a nap. So busy diet, um, right back to work. Um, and I didn't feel like I had this big insulin crash where then I'm sleepy at my desk in the afternoon. Um, and the other thing was then once I make it to dinner, you know, it's a little extra food because you're only having really this one meal. And it is was so satiating eating a big meal, sweet potato, butter, beef. Um, and uh, it, it was just it was just I was dialed in. So, you know, feeling better and then working out harder and it, it just really snowballed. I, um, I had the same feeling, um, with the busy diet. So when I created it, obviously the old MP had a busy diet that I had shifted from and been like, well, I like these portions of it, but there are these things. I mean, that was a lot over 10 years ago, right? These are the things I've learned. Here's what I want to try. And I was, it was a, along the same time 
Danny, as I was studying the blue zones and I realized, hey, you know, maybe it's not great if we're eating red meat twice a day, right? You know what I mean? Like I'm not 25 anymore. So it's like, you know, bringing in the plant protein um, and then on top of it, just not really having as much dairy and all these little changes, right? And I felt unbelievable on it immediately. And then when the 21 days were up, I was like, well, why am I stopping here? Like, this is like almost a new tweak to this lifestyle that I've already created. And then I would argue that maybe my lifts weren't all the way where they had been in the past, but um, the condition that I was in last summer was probably some of the best of my career and I, that I held for a long period of time, especially since I, bit, I got hurt a few years ago. And so then the results I kept seeing kind of pour in. Mm -hmm. And just to you, like you said, it's just so much easier to do. <laughs> and there is that uh, sensi which what was that word? Sensiation? I can't even say it. Sensiation. Uh, <laughs> Danny's laughing off camera. <laughs> so the other Danny, the small arms one. Um, so yeah. it's one of those things where um, I felt the exact same way that you just explained. So I think that's also a good clip for the community to say like, once again, this is a strategy to learn your body and can, you know, can achieve some really great results. So what, uh, what's your favorite muscle group to train? Yeah. Learning your body is, oh, it's gotta be chest. Yeah. yeah. So my, I, I've had a couple of, I've, I've torn my ACL and I've I had this Macy surgery where they replaced cartilage in my knee. So mm. there was definitely points in my life where I wasn't really squatting. So this program really revamped that for me where I was able to then lift heavy and keep pushing that all the time. Um, right. so I think my legs is my weakest muscle group, but that's also something that I've been trying my hardest to keep going, keep pushing harder. Um, but I'm definitely not lifting like you guys or uh, a lot of the members out there on the legs. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's encouraging though, because I think there's probably, once again, Danny, there's probably more people that have had those type of things than less people. Like everybody's banged up from high school or college sports or had some type of accident. And so like for them to be able to say like, wait, I through this, I might be able to get back to lifting like that with confidence. I think that's, that's an, that's a really important point. So that's, that's actually really exciting to hear because I know, you know, as you get older, man, the, my grandfather said this the best, like you can't lose your legs. Like your legs are your hormones, your legs are your power, your legs are, they're really like one of your lifelines. And if you can get those back at a level, like it sounds like you did, then that's going to contribute to better results and uh, all that. So that's, that's exciting to hear. Yeah. And, and gee, you know, you're, you're posting a lot with the jump rope lately. I'm always trying to find more ways to incorporate that. But during the weeks, Monday through Friday, doing the, the get stack stuff, it's tough to add that on. But on the weekends, doing my GPP or just lunge only days, I'm, I'm doing the jump rope and it feels good. You know, I feel agile again doing that type of stuff. Hell yeah. Um, any questions that you got for me? Anything that I can help you with? Anything you've thought about? You obviously have followed along for a little while. We're just chatting it up. So is there anything that you've ever wanted to ask or anything I can help you with, Danny? Yeah, sure. So, you know, I've been doing this stacked for a while um, and uh, they're, they're a long workout. So, you know, you're coming out with the pump thirties. There's a lot of buzz around it. I think, mm -hmm. how would you recommend incorporating those workouts more? I know I've heard you talk about maybe like three weeks of stacked, one week of pumps or, yeah. or this morning I did legs because you were having the notes um, for a pump do the pump 30 for the legs, uh, or if you want to do traditional lifting, do it that way. It was hard though, wasn't it? Oh, 1975 was killer. No, I think, so this is what I think. Um, and, and we're still kind of evolving this, right? Like Cole did the pump 30 leg workouts this morning. Uh, a lot of the other guys did like the traditional, like back squat stuff. Um, I'm still freaking hobbling around from doing five pump thirties in like yeah, three wow. hours at men's health killed me. Um, but the reality is I think. If you love to get stack plan and you're working on your lifts, but I think that three and one could be epically like da like dangerous in a good way for results, meaning that that would be your deload week, which I don't know that any of those workouts are really a deload, but what it would be though is a deload of time in the gym, the speed, uh, the amount of reps, the change in just the programming and the cadences and the different variety of like the methodologies I use within the pump thirties. So I think, and we've talked about it here, like alternating it like that. I wouldn't say it's it. I know it's going to work, but it just depends on partly how people like to train. See, I think that that's the biggest thing is that some people could do the get stacks and just really like those type of 
workouts better. You know what yeah. I mean? I don't like it that way personally, but I would like to bring that into the fold a little bit more. And so that's how I'm going to stage it. Um, when I, you know, to that point, but that's what I would recommend. I'd go three and one or, you know, just alternate. If you just feel like, you know what, I don't want to incline again. I just want to get some, get something different in, but I want to give the most amount of tools to the community to continue to have success and also still like the workouts at the end of the day, like most people are just bored or they kind of walk around the gym and they're not excited about it. I want them to be slightly intimidated by it in a way like, Oh, this shit looks kind of difficult or some of the things that look easy and they're way harder, you know, once you get there. And so I think that that's like, it's just another tool in the tool belt for the community, but that's how I would do it. I would, I would go three and one or two and two, um, and just see how your body responds. And it might be get, it might get to one of those things where you might go a full blown month and then be like, you know, I need to lift some heavy barbells again. You know what yeah. I mean? So, um, okay. that's how I would recommend it. So it's a great question. Yeah. And the other thing is, you know, you put out the chapter of one of your, um, how to build confidence win at life the other day, you got to do the yeah. chapter on non-negotiable habits and put that out. That's, that's the best. You put them all out. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, um, that that's interesting because I was like, I really thought, uh, if I think about that book, I was like, I really feel like that book could really run if enough people got a chance to hear it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to put it out basically for free that way. So I think people can get an idea of kind of like, you know, just what that book could really, how that book could really help people. And yeah, I think we've, we've only put out the first one. Two's coming up soon. And we're, I'm really trying to take old content that has either been so deep in the app or people have never, it just is far away from anybody even seeing it at this point and then starting to put it on YouTube just so I can try to involve some people into the process and then be like, wait a second. Okay. Now I need to go a little deeper with this guy. Cause that's what happened at bodybuilding.com. I had all that stuff out there and then people got a chance to kind of experience some of my craziness just like you did. And then they were like, okay, go another level. So I'm trying to kind of repeat that process in a way. So I appreciate you saying that because I think that book will be a book that later in my career could get hot. It just ain't right now. And I've read that about certain authors where it's like they write a book and it don't even get popular for five or 10 years later sometimes. Yeah. And so I feel like that material, and I think there's an emotion to me reading it that's like impossible to get by you, by you actually reading it other than me seeing me actually try to read it. You know what I mean? So it's like, I think that gives another side of me that obviously how important this whole process has been. Um, so yeah, appreciate that you saying that we're going to put out the rest of them for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That was the first book I ever did the lunge and learn too. really sits with me and, uh, it's a great, great lesson. Great read. Yeah. That's awesome. Anything else I can help answer for you? Uh, I think that's yeah. it for now. I mean, Vince brought up muscle Island, you know, I've seen the, uh, um, the warehouse, we got the pool table bourbon going, um, yes. hopefully just one day we can get a couple of people over there. So Danny, as we haven't completely all the way dropped yet, but that is what we're working on right now to where um, we're working on a whole model. And that's what I've been getting the warehouse ready. That's part of why I'm getting the island ready is that the homie homies uh, from Max Effort, Corey G, there's going to be a situation where we're going to have in-person events that guys like yourself can definitely come to and be a part of this one more notch, which I think a lot of people are you know, wanting. And that's what I want too. And we've been building all this, what I think really cool things that um, are inspiring to, to us. And I wanna be able to share it with you guys even more. And so I believe you will come to Muscle Island. And okay. And see everything. And that uh, we will be announcing very soon on how that happens. Awesome. That's amazing. It'll be good. Hey, I wanna congratulate you on such great results, all the hard work, the things that you said, I think are gonna help a lot of people. I really appreciate it, Danny. And look, it doesn't hurt that you got 10 racks to the bank account too on top of it, playa. Yeah, oh gee, <laughs> you, you laid the plan out, I just followed it. And I don't know if Danny told you, but he emailed me. He's like, just send me your bank info. I'm like, hold on, I gotta, can you call me? Yeah, 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 I gotta talk okay. on the phone quick. It's all good. And then yesterday, sorry, I got hauled up on the island, pumping water off of it. I couldn't get back in time for the interview, so that was my bad. But I was uh, like, well, Danny, he'll understand. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it was cool, man. Well, hey, I hope to see you soon at one of the events that we're going to put out soon. And uh, once again, appreciate all the hard work, and uh, congratulations. Definitely. Thanks, G. Appreciate it. it. Man. Peace. Bye-bye.